F word is female. The future. <laughs> That's good. <laughs>
I, I do like that time in the car, though. It's like some of the only time you have to yourself. So I, I enjoy putting on news radio and listening to interesting stories or putting on music. Um, but um, a lot of just sort of zone out time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes I get places and I don't even know how I got there. Like yeah. it's kind of like. Yeah. But the car is kind of a sacred. Yeah, or I, you know, sometimes I'll take the train too, which is really easy, and that's also a nice kind of zone out time to read or, or do something like that. So, tell us something about yourself because you're in a pretty public figure kind of role. Tell us something about you that we don't know. Something about me that you don't know. Um, well, I already told you what my first career was. Um, so I, I guess I'm, I, and I just kind of said it, I'm a mom of a 10 year old. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of an older parent. I, uh, we had our daughter, I was 40. My husband was a little older than that. So we're, we're older parents and uh, try to be, at, be as young as we can. Um, so we find ourselves um, doing lots of, lots of things that a 10 year old enjoys. So I think you know, a lot of our, our downtime or our free time is spent um, doing outdoor things. We like to go as a family and do a lot of hiking. Um, we uh, last weekend I was here with my daughter at the the Midway ice skating. Um, I and hope I don't break a bone, <laughs> but um, you know, we have to really work hard to, to stay um, young and keep up with with our daughter. So I, yes, yes. And what is the one thing in Hyde Park or a place or establishment that you really like? Um, someone that's into real estate. Maybe it's a house. Maybe it's a restaurant. Maybe it's a site. Is, um, can you think of one place in Hyde Park that just really clicks with you? Oh, there, there's lots of places. I mean, Hyde Park is such a beautiful community um, in terms of its architecture, in terms of um, you know just the the vibe you get on the street. You know, the the sort of vibrancy and, and activity. So it's hard to sort of narrow down one place. But I I do love, and this is part of the portfolio that that we work on. I love the. Um, the feel of the, the courtyard over at the Hyde Park Shopping Center where there's some restaurants and some outdoor dining, um, some of our local businesses, our, our you know, Bruce Wesley who was on this program, um, a toy store, and it, it just has such a calm feel to it in the middle of a very vibrant city and a vibrant community. That's, that's one of the places that I like and is okay. kind of a nice place sometimes to, to drop by and, and sit on a bench. So. Yes, you talk about being on a lot. I mean, you have your job, you're um, an older parent, uh, you work for the University of Chicago. What do you do to relax? What do you do in your downtime? What's downtime? I know, right? You fall asleep. Yeah, no, I know. I, I, I wish I could have time to watch more movies, but I tend to fall asleep. Um, so this, one of the silver linings of, of COVID has really been, um, uh, I found a little more time to read and, and tried to. Um, I, I've always loved to read, but sometimes you know you don't have time to do it. So um, I, I found some more time to read. So I've, I've enjoyed really um, escaping through some some books and trying to uh, es escape into different periods of time and different mm -hmm. um, characters and things like that. So I think reading is probably my number one escape in my in my downtime. Yeah, and so that flows into another question. I find that in Hyde Park, like 99.9% .9 of people are readers. Um, they read different kind of things, but just like people love to read. So if you were going to share a book or recommend a book to read, what, what might you recommend? Oh gosh, I've read so many good, it's hard to pick one, right? Um, I know, so, to remember what you read, it, like it's my thing. Like. My gosh, don't ask me to name the, the author as well, right? <laughs> because, I, um, so I'll, just, I'll go through a couple that I read this summer that I, I really, they, they really absorbed me, maybe. Um, so um, I read Underground Railroad this summer, which was really very, I think it won a Pulitzer, it's really absorbing. I want to read Nickel Boys by the same author. But I haven't yet done that. That's, that on, my, that's on my list for this yeah. year. Um, I, I like to check out people who I admire and see what's on their reading list and get ideas. Um, President Obama had um, one on his list, I think, from last year called um, Say Nothing. It was about um, Northern Ireland during the sort of the troubles. And um, I had a friend who grew up there during that time, so it was really very interesting and, and contextual for me to read that. Um, I'm trying to think with some other ones that I've read recently. Um, I read one called Educated. Have you read that one? Um, it's, it's a really interesting story of a, a woman whose family for 
religious reasons, doesn't believe in sending their children to school, and, and some of the um, how she dealt with that and, and eventually uh, overcame that and, and uh, became educated, uh, went to university. Um, those are a few that I read this summer that I that I really liked. Um, Americana. I don't know if you read that one. I did. Yeah. yeah, I did. yeah. It, interesting. Uh, just a different perspective on, on being an immigrant in America. I, I think was a really interesting book. Those are a few that I've read. No, those those are good. So yeah, I read. You read Underground Railroad, and I read the other one, Nickel Boy, which really was. It, it just took me under to know that a place like that kind of existed. I. Not sure I read Americana, but I read American Dirt, which is kind of a different... I didn't read that one. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. I, that's on my <laughs> list as well. So kind of like we're reading kind of like in the circle. And then um, I was in Costco recently, and uh, President Obama has come out with a, a new book, which is getting a lot of uh, reviews. But I don't know. I still feel like I'm traumatized since he was president. So I'm not sure I'm ready to read his book. But I did Obama, I did Michelle, you know, last year. Yeah. yeah. The, the the university is is taking taking a break between Christmas and New Year's, and I'm, I'm I've got to get my list together of books and get them ready to to, to read uh, yeah. during the break. Yeah, yeah. So let me see what else I have on here in terms of relaxing. We kind of got through that. What are you passionate about? So I think one of the things that I'm that always sort of. You know, what do you? What makes you want to wake up in the morning, right, and jump out of bed? It's really. Um, I, I told you sort of how I came into sort of the uh, being interested in urban planning and community development. Um, what I, what that kind of led me to is I'm really interested in neighborhoods and really interested in um, neighborhoods that have been under resourced, and so that's sort of where a lot of my work has been over my my career. So. You know, after I, I graduated, I went to, um, I came to the city and I worked in, in Roseland on the far south side. Um, I went to the city of Chicago and worked at the Department of Housing, um, where we worked in a lot in neighborhoods all over the city, but primarily on the south and west side. I then went uh, to the Pullman neighborhood, which I know you know well, and I spent you know eight years working at a not-for-profit down there where our work was really about development to create jobs and, and amenities. So we, we, got, we worked on a grocery store, we worked on a couple of big um, developments like Method and Gotham Greens and a Whole Foods mm -hmm. distribution mm -hmm. that how do you get those developments to a neighborhood that really needs the jobs and then how do you make sure that those jobs are linked to community residents. So those are the kinds of things I'm, I'm passionate about in, this, in, in sort of you know, real estate development is interesting, but you know, I as a career, I don't think I'd be super interested just going and developing strip malls somewhere. But what's really interesting to me is how do you how do you use real estate development as a tool to really help neighborhoods um, by promoting small business, by creating access to jobs and opportunities for the the neighborhood, and involving the the community residents in the process. So what gets built reflects what people want to see in their community. Those are things that um, are interesting to me and, and things that um, sort of when I think about my work, those are the really things that get me out of bed in the morning. So. Do you ever think you'll write a book or? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 um, you know, have, you know, it's having, far from it. Yeah, I haven't, uh, I, I, I like to write and um, having a, you know, being later in life and then you're reading a lot of children's books I often think boy wouldn't it be fun to write a children's book um, but uh, no immediate, no immediate plans to write a book yes 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 um, is there a podcast you like and why And you may not be a yeah. podcast person. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I, I haven't done, you know, there's none that I, I listen to regularly, more be, mostly because I, I have I don't have the time to research them and, and whatnot. So no, there's not, I don't have any, I, you know, I've, I've listened to a few, but none come to mind that I'd recommend or anything like right. that. that. I think that's on my list for, for the new year is to get more into podcasts. Yeah. And um, how has COVID impacted your life? I mean, it, there's a lot of negative, there's a lot of positive, uh, you know, I can say for myself, it's definitely put me more in contact with people and kind of maintaining connections. But how has COVID, you know, and you've kind of alluded a little bit already, 
yeah. to how COVID has impacted your life, but how, you know? Yeah, so, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, the hardest part is not being able to see family. Um, so I think before this started, we mentioned I haven't been able to see my parents or my brother for over a year, so that's been hard. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, you try and maintain that connection through through Zoom or through phone calls and emails and things. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, then, then learning to work at, work at home and, and manage a team. I have, a, uh, you know, at the university, we have a team of of eight of us, um, just terrific people who work really hard. Um, so making sure that they stay connected and, and that they feel supported, you know, managing a team remotely is, is challenging. So that's that's been an impact. Um, I think, you know, the silver linings, there have been some, right? So um, I, as I said, I read more, I, you know, I sleep more a little mm -hmm. bit because you're not, you're, there's not quite as much commute time or running to meetings and things. So I, I've learned that, boy, I feel a little bit better with a little extra sleep. So that, that's been a silver lining. And I think just really um, having time to spend with your immediate family, sometimes the togetherness might feel a little overwhelming, but it's actually been really fun. Um, you know, how often do you get to, uh, you know, spend that kind of quality time with, with your immediate family? So that, that's been good. I think. You know, I, uh, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, when the world opens back up. Um, uh, you know, I think uh, I, I would, I'd like to get out and travel a little bit and see the world a little bit when it's safe to do so. And, uh, and I'll look forward to connecting with, with friends in person. But um, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how it all um, feels once the world opens up again. Yeah, I wonder if we'll take anything we learned good in like I try recipes now, um, and that's kind of been interesting. I've had more time to kind of put to that. Um, I go to the park more, and I'm like, when the world opens back up, will I be at a park? I don't know, but it's been really nice to kind of sit and be present and spend quality time with people. So I hope post-COVID that, uh, yeah, we take some good stuff with us into the future. Yeah, really kind of back to basics, right? Board games and yeah. baking and um, things that we were always too busy being busy, right, to, yeah. to do. And so, yeah, that, that's kind of been fun. So, um, yeah, not to, um, I, I know a lot, there's a lot of hardship right now and not to, certainly not to minimize that because there's, you know, a lot of, a lot of suffering due to, to COVID, but it, you have to look for some bright spots, right, to, to stay for positive. sure, for sure. With the holidays coming up, um, what's on your Christmas list? <laughs> what's on my Christmas? So yeah, what do you want Santa Claus <laughs> to bring you? And please don't say you don't believe in Santa Claus because it would just break my heart. You know, I've been believing in Santa for a lot of years. <laughs> uh, I would never say that. Okay, I would never say that. Um, so uh, you know, we've been because we're home so much. Um, we've been trying to do some uh, upgrades to our condo. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. so our, you know, like things that didn't bother us when when we were always out and about. Like when you're home all the time, you think, gosh, we really need a new couch. You know. So, mm -hmm. so we've been kind of slowly replacing some things that are worn and torn, and you know, mm -hmm. doing a little painting and doing some things like that. So, so um, I think we our Christmas list has been about. Uh, uh, redoing our, our living environment, so there's nothing big. We've been kind of gradually doing it, but um, I, you know, certainly we. I, I love Christmas. I love. Um, I love just the the you know, preparations for it. I like the the decorations. I like you know being with a with kids and, and having them you know be excited about it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um. I think we're almost done. We've hit a lot of my questions. Um, so generally, I have a question I end with. But before I end with that, I would like to mention five words. And as I say those words, you can just say whatever comes to oh, your no. mind. I know, right? <laughs> you know, I was on YouTube this morning, you know. So uh, just when you hear the word, it's nothing that's going to shock you. But uh, it was real interesting. Just whatever comes to your mind, you can talk about that word for however long. Um, so there are five words. They all begin with F. The first word is family. So you want one word or you want whatever? Just whatever comes to mind when you hear the word family. Uh, at the center. At the center of everything. Okay. Good, good. Faith. Again, at the center of everything. Okay. The future. At the center. No, I'm just <laughs> Hopeful. Hopeful. Hopeful about the future. Uh, fun. 
so important, right? We get so bogged down in, in uh, all the detritus of, of things we have to do and, and work and, and, and you know, obligations, whatever, but it's so important to, to cut it off and have some fun once in a while, right? And just really have a good laugh with the people that you care about. Okay, and the last F word is female. The future. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, you know, let, I, uh, I'm encouraged to see, you know, emer lots of emerging female leaders and, and emerging female leaders, not just in politics, but in, in fields that, mm -hmm. that women have typically been underrepresented in. Um, I, I'm often, though, you know, in, in real estate, I'm often many times the only woman in the room, and so I, I, I'm always, um, I, I think we need to support other women. I think we need to, to help nurture other women um, in whatever our field is. I, I'm a big advocate of that. Good, good. Sounds good. So my last question on this show I always ask people is, what's on your bucket list to do? You know, we're all on a journey, but, you know, what is something that, you know, while you're on the earth, you would like to do? So I... Hmm. I won't come up with anything very profound. I'll give you just some real practical ones. I've never gone skiing before, and mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I, really, before, I would really like to try and ski. It might be the first and only time, but I'd like to try and ski. Um, and then I think maybe a lot of people feel this one right now, but again, the world has felt pretty small um, for since March, right? Mm -hmm. And so wanting to, um, to expand my uh, horizons a little bit and, and travel. Um, last, last Christmas, right after Christmas, we were fortunate that we were able to, to go as a family to London and um, it was just so such a great trip and it really, you know, it was the first big trip we'd done um, as a family and so it really gave us the bug and want to go and do more things. So we've had some fun going through books and saying, okay, maybe we'll go here, and maybe we'll go here, and, and thinking about where some of those places might be, so. Yeah, yeah, I love going on Pinterest and looking. I mean, I've looked at Iceland. I mean, you know, we had tickets to go to Italy this year, so it was a sad kind of like, you know, along with a lot of other people. Um, but yeah, I do hope to travel the world. Well, thank you for entrusting us with your journey a little bit and sharing. Thank and you. I hope I, I didn't bore your, your viewers to death. Uh, oh, no, no. So thanks for being on Crooked Courage. You have been listening to uh, Angie. She could be referred to be called, but professionally, uh, 